Well, hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica Likewise. I'm studying for my BCBA exam. After 13 years of practicing ABA in the field, like many of you, I was afraid to take the exam. I was overwhelmed by the idea of studying, but I've been studying, and in order to help you study with me, I'm making new study videos so we can do it together. So today we're gonna to talk about the difference between a parametric and non-parametric analysis. So stay tuned. <music> Well, hey guys, and welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about what parametric analysis is. So a parametric analysis refers to identifying the independent variable in a study and evaluating that independent variable. So there's two values that we can assign to it. One would be a parametric and one would be non-parametric. So what does that actually mean? Well, an independent variable is non-parametric if it is just turned on or off. So I like to look at the light switch example. So if the lights are either on or off, if you have a regular normal light switch, they're either on or off, that is a non-parametric value, right? Because it, now obviously there's really not experimental design, but that's just an analogy. So on or off, right? So that is what non-parametric means. So think of non, I like to think of it as on, it just kind of rhymes. So try to remember that it's on or off, but sometimes the independent variable will have gradients to it. And I like to think of that as a dimmer switch, right? A dimmer switch can be really bright, it can be low light, and that would be a parametric measure, meaning that there's values or gradients. Now, that is not a real example because obviously um, the light switch is not behavior, but I like to use it to remember it that way. So let's look at another real life example. Let's say you have strep throat and you go to the doctor and they give you antibiotics and you're gonna take those antibiotics for 10 days. At the end of those 10 days, the antibiotics stop, right? So there, you were taking the antibiotics, then you're not taking the antibiotics. That is a non-parametric independent variable, right? In that, if you were to study that and you wanted to quantify whether or not the antibiotics help with strep throat, it would be a non-parametric analysis because it's either you're taking them or you're not taking them. But let's talk about someone who has a chronic illness, maybe someone who has bipolar disorder and they're or ADHD and they're taking Adderall. And so the dosage of Adderall may change over time. It may be that the doctor experiments and says, okay, we're gonna start off with, and I have no idea um, about dosing for Adderall. So don't take this as a medical recommendation, but we're gonna start off with 15 milligrams and then we're gonna do 20 milligrams and we're gonna do 25 milligrams. Then we're gonna go back to 15 and then we're gonna go to 10. And we're gonna test and we're gonna do this for one week for each of the dosages. I doubt a doctor would do this, but just for the sake of this example. And you're gonna spend six weeks trying now different dosages to see whether or not which one was best for you. Well, that would be the example of a parametric um, analysis, right? Because the independent value, the value of the independent variable, it is actually changing. So, okay, we get that in real life examples, but how would that apply to a behavioral intervention? Well, I came up with a case study for you. I actually have three case studies for you. We're gonna go over one in this video. If you want the rest, head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com. Every video I make on this, um, on the YouTube channel, and you may not know this, has a corresponding study notes with it. Um, they're on my blog. Now they're not edited, they're not formally written as a blog post, they are actually my study notes that I typed up and I'm sharing with you, which means they're not edited, they're not proper grammar, they're not in prose form, um, they're definitely not in proper APA formatting. But if you wanna study with them, it's a free gift, just head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com. I have more examples there. I actually love making examples, and this is my own little study tip. For me, you know, when we're taking the BCBA exam, it's not gonna be just terms and definitions, we have to actually apply them. And they're gonna have, and I've done this from, I've been studying using mock questions, they're gonna have uh, scenarios, right? And ask us what, which uh, measure applies or what we do in this situation. So for me, if I can write out scenarios that utilize each term, that means I have a really good understanding of it. So I would encourage you to do the same thing that I'm doing. Again, we're in this together, we're studying this together. That's a trick that I found that's really helped me a lot. So anyway, so we're gonna go with my case study that I came up with. So in this case study, we're talking about Nicholas. He's a four-year-old boy with autism and he presents with eloping and non-compliance during the session. He'll leave the instructional setting and he'll refuse to come back to the table. So what would we do? So I came up with what would be a parametric, an intervention using a parametric independent variable and then an intervention using a non-parametric independent variable. So let's go over the parametric value first. 
So let's just say the therapist says, okay, we're going to use a choice board and we're going to use a token economy with Nicholas. So Nicholas is going to get a token economy. And then when he gets all his tokens, he's going to get to pick from the choice board. So let's say the therapist says, okay, well, you know what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to test to see how many tokens work best for Nicholas. So one day we're going to do three tokens. One day we're going to do seven tokens. One day we're going to do five tokens. One day we're going to do 10 tokens. One day we're going to do four tokens. And then we're going to repeat it. And then, you know, at the end of two weeks, we're going to identify how many tokens is best for Nicholas, the dosage, right? The dosage of tokens, the dosis of an intervention, dosage. Um, so we're going to figure out how many work the best. And that is going to be a parametric analysis, right? A parametric independent variable because of the fact that the value of the independent variable changed over time. And that's really what you want to think about. So, and the idea is that when you're analyzing a parametric variable, what you're actually determining is how much of an intervention does a person require? And there's different ways in which you can actually change that, uh, that independent variable. And again, if you want more examples, head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com. Well, that's different from a non-parametric analysis. When you're using a non-parametric analysis, you're not trying to find how much of an intervention a child needs. You're just trying to find out whether it works or not, because it's either turned on or turned off. So in this example of Nicholas, if the therapist said, okay, we're going to do five tokens, and it's always going to be five tokens. It's not going to change. We're going to use a choice board. They get five tokens. Then they get to pick from the choice board. And that's what we're going to do. And so it, what the analysis would look like there, or what, it, what the, ex, the experimental design would look like there, is we start off with the baseline, right? We take the baseline data of not of what Nicholas is doing in terms of reloping from the table and non-compliance. Once the baseline is stable, we start the intervention. So the intervention, again, it's going to be a token board with five tokens and picking from the choice board. It doesn't vary from day to day. It doesn't vary between discrete trials. It doesn't vary between the breaks. It's always five tokens and the choice board. And then we take it away, right? That's the withdrawal aspect. So this is usually used in, or this is this example I'm giving you is an ADA, um, ADA uh, an analysis, reversal or withdrawal design. So now there's no intervention. So we started off with no intervention, then we had the intervention, then we took the intervention away. We stopped using the token board to see whether or not it returns to baseline. And then if we replicate it, right, we put the intervention back, we go back into the B phase, the intervention comes back, but it doesn't change. It's still five tokens. That is what a non-parametric analysis or non-parametric non -parametric independent variable is. It's either you're using the intervention or you're not using the intervention. So that's a little bit different than in the first example where the, the amount of tokens varied and they weren't trying to figure out, is the token board working? Is this an effective intervention? It was how many tokens should we use in order to make the intervention most effective? So I really hope that this helps you. Um, it's one of those concepts that seems super simple, but you can memorize that concept, but it's not memorizing the concept that's gonna help you on the exam. I haven't taken the exam, I haven't seen the exam, but at least doing mock questions. You know, for me, it seems like it's being able to apply it in situations that's most important. So this is how I applied it. I would encourage you to write your own examples of parametric and non-parametric um, design. And again, I would encourage you to do that because in order to pass the test, you're not gonna to need to know the definition. You're gonna to need to apply it in situations. So if you do, drop them in a comment below and let's see if other listeners can guess whether or not um, it's a non-parametric or parametric design. So you can put your two examples and let's see if everyone who's watching this video can guess which one is which. So I really hope this video helped. If you have any questions for me, maybe you wanna to study together, uh, drop me a comment again, all of my study notes are on my website, and the way to contact me is through a form on my website. That's hopeeducationservices.com. Thanks for watching these videos. I'm excited to be studying along with you, and I'll see you next time.